Um, so we have different strategies for uh, different situations, but um, in general, we look for situations where we can add value to assets. So it could be situations where we buy an abandoned warehouse and convert it into creative lofts, or an old department store which has been empty and we convert it into creative offices. Um, or we buy underutilized offices where we change them into hotel service apartments. We've done all of that. Uh, but generally, we look for under, underutilized and undermanaged assets uh, and bring them to life again. Uh, and in areas where um, we see new trends emerging or new transport infrastructure, we can also buy land and build. So prime, prime examples are our development platforms in China on logistics warehouse or on uh, premium outlet malls. Uh, so th those are good examples where we see um, emerging opportunities, but there are no existing assets which are suitable for us to buy. And, and in, that, in those situations, we will build. Uh, we also like to look for up and coming locations um, where people haven't discovered yet, or we look for uh, old neighborhoods which have lost its uh, previous lusters. So in situations like that, if we are ahead of the curve, um, you can make quite substantial profits. So I think uh, our key to our success is our people uh, and the good teamwork. Um, our, like our firm's motto, right? Our people are passionate in their work, they are creative in their thinking, and they're also responsible to the uh, shareholders, to the investors. Um, I think um, we've been successful in converting and managing a lot of complex uh, pro projects because of the close collabor collaboration between our investment teams and also our operating platforms. Uh, and in that, we have three operating platforms in general. Uh, one is the commercial asset management platform, which takes care of our office and retail portfolios. Um, second is our hospitality, plat hospitality management platform, which is run by GCP Hospitality. It's a separate company, uh, a subsidiary of ours. Um, and that company has the ability to uh, manage our own brands, uh, also, and also working a lot with uh, international operators. Uh, and third is our development platform. That gives us the capability to, um, to manage complex retrofit projects and also build from scratch. Uh, this, that gives us a very good edge in terms of um, uh, looking at a much wider spectrum of op opportunities compared to other investors. Uh, and talking about other investors, I think uh, in the market there are a lot of PE managers, uh, which are typically financial allocators. Uh, they don't have the capability to, to tackle the kind of complex repositioning place that we do. Uh, typically, they have to work with, with third-party operators. Um, so whilst we also work with third-party operators uh, in certain situations, uh, we find that having our own team uh, give, gives us a big edge. Um, like I said before, it, it lets us look, look at much wider uh, spectrum of, of, of opportunities. But also, more importantly, when you work with third-party operators, sometimes things do go wrong. And if things go wrong, uh, having our own team, we can jump in quickly and correct the situation. Uh, yes, um, Asia is still going to be the largest growth economies of the world and in the next five to ten years uh, China will still be the highest growth of the big economies of the world. Um, next two to three years things may still be choppy. Um, people have been talking about bubble bursting in China for I think for the last ten years. You have, you have hear that from people. Uh, the government has I think has successfully steered a soft landing for the economy. Um, but the economy is still transitioning from the old manufacturing, export-led growth into now a services and consumption-based growth. So things could still be bumpy, uh, but we believe in the next five, ten years, uh, there are plenty of opportun opportunities. The government is uh, doing a good job steering this transition. Uh, and even more encouraging is we see that the next generation of uh, corporate leaders, of uh, entrepreneurs, they are truly creative, they are truly world-class, and they're providing a lot of... Um, a lot of motivation and also role models to the next, next generation. So we feel that China's future is bright. And, um, and the other thing is China is a very big place, right? You will see certain areas, let's say in the Northeast, where the old state-owned enterprise dominated manufacturing is going through a downturn. But then you're seeing um, er big cities like Shanghai, Beijing, Shenzhen, where there's IT, uh, service sectors, which is going through a boom. So in a big country like China, you really have to understand the different regions and understand the different uh, economic drivers of what drives them. Uh, it's really no different from investing in other big economies like, like the US or Europe, where certain, let's say the US, uh, the two coasts are booming and the Rust Belt are, is not. In Europe, Germany and certain other countries are booming and Southern Europe is not. So 
you have to understand uh, it's a big economy and different parts of the economies have different drivers. In a fast changing economy like China, um, there are a lot of opportunities. So let's say the rapid growth of e-commerce. Uh, it may be displacing certain old bricks and mortar uh, real estate like department store. So that creates opportunities for us. An empty department store giving us an opportunity to buy cheap and converting it to other use. Uh, and again, e-commerce uh, also creates demand for other forms of uh, real estate. So prime example would be creating the demand for logistics warehouse. And on that, we have already set up a logistics development platform two years ago. So changes also brings about opportunities. And it's just, if you, you just need to have a clear mind and a creative, creative thinking uh, and be ready to roll up your sleeves and uh, get to work on them. Uh, other parts of Asia um, also have other opportunities. Financial centers like Hong Kong and Singapore always have good opportunities in, uh, in, the, right side of, in the right part of the cycle. Um, mature economies like Japan provides good leverage yield play so long as the financial market is stable. Uh, tourism is also good there uh, as long as the yen stays relatively cheap. Um, Korea is a country going through a, a weak economic cycle, uh, also compounded by political risk, geopolitical situations, uh, and corporate debt issues. So there may be uh, distress type opportunities that we can tackle. Um, there are a lot of other opportunities, high growth economies like Vietnam, um, dislocation due to financing issues in, um, even in uh, countries like Australia. So we've been seeing a lot of opportunities investing in Asia.